Hello and welcome to the EX Series Management Access Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Thanks for taking the time to watch this Learning Byte. Let's get started. After successfully completing this Learning Byte, you will be able to configure and verify management access on EX Series switches. If an administrator wants to remotely manage an EX series switch, some configuration is required. The switch needs an IP address that would connect it to the management network, and the appropriate management services have to be configured and enabled on the device. EX series switches have a dedicated management Ethernet interface. In the example on this slide is a rear view of an EX4300 series switch. There is a console port and also a dedicated management Ethernet interface. Now this physical port would be cabled to your management network and then it would need an IP address assigned to it. That physical port on the back is identified inside of the Juno software as ME0. Management Ethernet Zero. This interface requires an IP address. Now this is the simplest part. This is like configuring any other interface with an IP address. It's just simply this is the dedicated management port on the back of the EX series switch. The, what's going to take you a little bit of time is that you'll need to understand exactly what management services you need to enable on the switch. And this is done under the edit system services branch in the configuration hierarchy. At your shop you will have a standard configuration for the management services that you have to enable and configure on your devices. I want to connect to an EX4300 series switch and, and see some options for management access. This is an EX4300 series switch. I have a console connection to it. This is one way to access the device for, for management. I want to enter configuration mode and kind of look at some management options on this device. The first thing we mentioned was that the device needs an IP address and I've already configured that on the ME0 interface. We configured a logical unit which is always required for, for interfaces on Juniper devices. I've made it a layer 3 interface with the family INET and, and here's the magic. I've assigned an IP address to this. So this would be the management IP address of this switch. Now also I have to enable the required management services for my environment. And on Juno's devices, this is done under the Edit System Services branch of the configuration hierarchy, and, and there are several options. Now remember I said that in your shop you will have a standard set of requirements for the management services that have to be configured, enabled, and enabled on your devices. It's very common, for example, to enable Secure Shell. So I can use a secure shell client such as PuTTY or secure CRT and remotely connect into this switch, authenticate and have an encrypted channel that I can use to manage and monitor the device. But there are, uh, there, there, there's Telnet access that can be configured. Maybe you want to manage your switch using a web browser. Well, these are the type of services that you'll have to configure and enable uh, to perform these functions, to be able to manage the devices using these different services. One thing I want you to realize is that it may not always be a human being manually connecting to this device and executing commands. You may have external management applications, external monitoring applications that connect using different protocols such as REST APIs or NetConf, for example. So you'll need to be aware of the different management requirements in your network and ensure you enable the correct services. One of the reasons I wanted to do this learning by it was this switch actually has an interesting uh, uh, management connectivity setup. So let me, let me show you what's currently running on this switch. Under the Edit System Services branch, the FTP service has been enabled. Why would I do that? Well, it, it depends on your environment. Again, this switch is actually used a lot in a lab environment. And so 
it's it's used in different configurations depending on the courses that are using this equipment and so I may have an automated provisioning system that can dynamically push down the correct configuration files to this device for the course that's being run on this device and and so maybe I require FTP to do that all right so every environment will be a little bit different here's here's secure shell we've enabled that again that's very common but the defaults on most secure shell implementations do not allow an administrator to log in using the root account. Well, we've changed that here. And we've set some, you know, some session limits to help secure the switch. Telnet access is also enabled. Now, that's maybe not the most common protocol to enable because it does allow remote connectivity to, to manage the device, but the connection, the authentication, and all the commands and so forth is, is clear text. But maybe you have some type of service that needs to connect. It only supports Telnet. I'll create a dedicated service account user that only can execute a couple different commands. So, I don't know. It's your shop. One thing that may or may not be enabled on your switches is web access. Maybe you would like to manage your switches using a web browser. Well, the EX series switches have a web management interface called JWeb, but it's not enabled by default. You have to enable the web management service so the HTTP daemon spins up on the switch. And it's probably required that you use HTTPS so the management connection is encrypted. And I can even generate my own self-signed certificate so I don't need an external certificate authority to turn this on. But one thing that is unique here, remember, we looked at the ME0 interface. We configured that, we set an IP address on that port, but I've configured the web management service not to listen for connections on ME0. I've actually configured it to listen on a different interface, in this case, GIGI000. And so if I wanted to manage this device using a web browser, I would need to open a browser on my management workstation and browse to whatever IP address is assigned to the GIGI000 interface. Okay. This switch is also currently being managed by Juno Space Network Director. This is a centralized management system that can manage all your EX series, QFX series switches. The network director application can discover the switch devices on your network and when it discovers them it establishes a connection to them and it uses this connection to to push or pull configuration from the devices and also to monitor the state status of the devices collect statistics and logs and so forth but to actually be able to connect to the device the appropriate management service has to be enabled and the network director application uses the netconf protocol tunneled over secure shell. If I don't enable this particular management service, I can't communicate between network director and this device. And so this is what I was trying to say earlier about, you know, at your shop, you will have a standard because there will be certain applications that are used for monitoring and managing your switches on top of the day-to-day -day secure shell connections that you as an administrator may use. So make sure you understand the options and then how to configure them. So, so these are the management services that are enabled on this EX4300 series switch. I want to connect now to an administrative desktop and, and just give you an example of accessing this switch using these services. Here's my administrative workstation. I just have a terminal open and, and I can secure shell into this switch, right? I, I enabled that service. And I even configured that I can connect in as root. Now the, the management IP address on the ME0 on this particular switch was 10.210.2.68. And I'm gonna, whoops, 2.60, well, I'm having a hard time typing. And I'm going to log in. Hey, it's asking me for a password. If I can remember it, hey, here I am. I'm logged in. It, it kind of dropped my prompt way down to the bottom of the terminal window here. But I, I, I logged in as root, remember, so I'm actually at a Unix shell prompt. I'd have to type CLI to get into the Junos you know, shell. So I, I'm able to connect as uh, using secure shell. We also had Telnet turned on. Now again, that's probably not the most secure way to access and manage your switch, but 
we enable the service. And so I can log in, manage the device remotely. Okay. Now we also remember uh, we enabled web management. Hey, I want to use a web interface to manage my device. Okay, that's fine. But the key thing is uh, when we were looking at the configuration, this is this is JWeb. This is the you know the web interface. When we went under Edit System Services and enabled web management, that enables this interface to to function on the on the device. And but remember the IP address on ME0 was 10.210.2.60. Well, we enabled web management using HTTPS, but we only enabled it on the Giggy 000 interface. So I had to know this IP address to get in to manage it using the web browser. I also mentioned that this device is being managed by the Juno Space Network Director application. And then we had to enable under system services the NetConf protocol over SSH. That's how the network director can discover and manage the devices. And there's actually two, there's an EX1 switch and an EX2 switch. And the network director, because I enabled the correct management services, is able to connect to the device and, and you know, sync the configurations and monitor and maintain these two EX series switches. So again, to summarize, in your shop, you will have a standard set of management services that will have to be enabled and this is how you would perform these functions on EX series switches. In this learning by we configured and verified management access on an EX series switch. For more information about Juniper Networks training and certification options, please visit our website. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.